Welcome back, everyone, to the Light and Life podcast, conversations on faith and life in downtown Colorado Springs. I'm your host, Liza, here again with Pastor Tim. Hey, Liza. Hey, Pastor Tim. How's it going? It's good. It's oh. real good. <laughs> oh, yeah. good. Um, today, we realized that this podcast is actually dropping on Father's Day. We're Yeah, so we're getting professional now. We actually realized that this podcast, you're getting this podcast on Father's Day, so Amazingly, we came up with the following topic. <laughs> Father's Day. Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> and to start, yeah. I thought it'd be fun to ask you what your favorite dad joke is. Which I don't have one at all. I just don't. I, I think could you steal do. yours. Go ahead. You can take it. <laughs> Velcro. What a ripoff. Mm-hmm. But um But um <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I don't have that internal you know, sense that dads get, you know, to tell jokes. Like for me, a dad joke is just, it's not really a dad joke. It's just something that I said. It's, it just comes naturally. Right. Huh. I wonder what that's like. (laughs) I got, I have to pre-plan my jokes, you know, time them well. Yeah. And they just come to you. It's just part of who I am. That's (laughs) that's a gift. Since I've had four kids and uh, it's just a gift. It's just part of how God made me. So when do the dad jokes start? Is it like, you know, once a kid is a certain age, like once you have your firstborn, or is it like? Yeah, I think it's when, I think when Ellie was about three or four years old, it they just locked in. It just sort of fell from heaven uh-huh. and um, just became a part of my identity. If that's not provision, I don't know what it I is. I know. <laughs> and people say there's no God. Right, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Take that. Take that, atheist. We should take that out of the podcast. <laughs> we should not say that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I think it's well, right. so today it's Father's Day. Um, and like we said before, we thought we might talk a little bit about dads, but mm-hmm. not, you know, just dads, guys in general. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope you, you know, you feel the same way or listener. I hope you recognize that. I'd, I'd, I've had it on my mind for a while that um, it's getting. Uh, I look at young Christian men trying to figure out what it means to be a man in society today, in the world today, and I just think feel like it's getting a lot harder. I think it's getting um, – there are particular challenges out there about being a man or being um, a boy, uh, being male, um, mm-hmm. you know, and, and there's articles coming out about this. Like you see uh, people who are doing studies, secular articles about – how boys are falling behind. Uh, there's a lot fewer um, guys going to college than mm. girls going to college now. Interesting. And um, and then there's uh, a kind of a increased sense of um, lostness. Just uh, uh, young men who don't really f- feel a rhythm or a purpose or a drive or um, don't know how to connect with any ambition. Um, you know, this this uh, generation seems to be kind of um, uh, getting just kind of lost in video games and low ambition. Mm-hmm. And where does that play a role relationally? Yeah, well, I mean, I so I, I kind of thought that you would be like, yeah, where are these guys? Um, <laughs> but but you actually said in the notes when I when we were talking about this question earlier, you said, hey. Let's be kind Let's be to kind. the 20s generation, right. okay? We're sensitive, and we're doing the best we can. We're doing the best <laughs> we can, which I love that. <sighs> um, but, yeah, I think, I mean, I don't know. I, I think about um, uh, my daughter. I think about uh, you, and I, I do. I, sometimes I think, like, th- there's, there's, there's some women out there, some young women out there who are kind of wondering, where are these young men? And Oh, totally. Totally, right? Dating scene in Colorado Springs is tough. Let me tell you. Stand by for a future podcast. <laughs> Stand by, yeah. Um, but I think it is getting really tough. I think uh, mm-hmm. I think young men, um, which I, and what I attribute this to, at least how I've, I've understood it, is that we watch sort of the um, the drive to equalize the playing field, which uh, for a long time in our our country and possibly still was fully dominated by white males and so we need to get more you know diversity more people um, up onto the playing field on equal footing um, and then this has caused a, a kind of reverse problem for for white males which is the majority of, of males in this country 
um, but they just don't know how to find their their place in the world. And then you've got in um, in some other contexts, like in the urban African American communities, you have a very real problem of the absent father that creates its own uh, difficulties and and um, uh, overall, it just feels like young men don't know where to turn to figure out how to be men. I mean, does that make sense to you? Is that totally? And I, I don't think they know what the scale is. Like, what is a man? You know, not right. only how do I become this godly man in a Christian context, but what actu- what is it that defines a man? Exactly. Like, how do I know if I'm doing it? Um, books have come out, you know, and and you can tell when something resonates because. A uh, book will go on fire, you know, very quickly. Everybody wants a copy, and they're just. I've seen these books come out, um, how to be a man kind of books that uh, sometimes have some good things in them, and then there's things that I really sort of lament that that guys are wrapping their minds around. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's these uh, podcasts that um, uh, that I see young men attaching themselves to, and just following in kind of a countercultural mode, like nobody else is saying this, so I'm really interested in this, like the Jordan Peterson podcast or the Joe Rogan podcast, mm-hmm. or, and, and jumping into those things. And again, I think, okay, like I get that you, you want to go countercultural because everyone is telling you that being a man is kind of a, a toxic thing, like a toxic masculinity, or it's wrong that you're you know, it's not a great thing that you're a man. You need to kind of get out of the way. And then there's some people that are rallying up and saying, wait a minute, you need to be this kind of a man. But I look at those models, and I'm obviously I'm not thrilled that that's a Christian model that I want young men running after either. So mm-hmm. I think there's just that's, – that's a lot to say, but it just feels like there is a problem. Totally. I think, you know, having friends um, who are outside of college and doing life – on their own. Mm -hmm. We've had various conversations on, you know, their hopes and dreams to, of what it, what it is to be a father and how, you know, how they have to work on themselves as an individual, but then work on themselves in partnership with someone else. Um, And they don't know, I guess in, in these times right now, a lot of people are sensitive to roles, you know, male, female roles. And, yeah. Looking, you know, zooming out a little bit. What does God have to say about those roles or what a man should be? Um, and so I think it causes a lot of identity issues because, yeah. you know, the world is saying something different than, you know, what their parents might say or what the Bible says or, right. you know, in what context do we take a passage of the Bible literally what when do we take it in its context and you know how does it play a role in their lives now yeah those categories have all been thrown into the air for Mm -hmm. sure like and we're not going um as a culture i think you know we're not going back to i love lucy or uh, (laughs) you know leave it to beaver like that's not coming back Uh really you know and um but as Christians, you're trying to say, well, I don't just sort of swim in the stream. I want to do what the Bible lays out. So, okay, well, what is that? What is that exactly? Is that mm-hmm. um, was I Love Lucy the ideal vision of like the Christian home, or <laughs> you know, I don't, or Leave It to Beaver, or whatever, you, whatever you kind of think of of the 1950s America suburban life? Um, probably not. It's probably a bigger than that, right? What it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman, what it means to be married, what it means to build a Christian home around Christ and His mission, and it's got to be bigger than than that. But people who don't have a great way to work this out. So we've okay. So we've gone a little like we've rabbit gone, hole. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of rabbit look, going deeper than um, than or than than I thought we might. But it's Father's Day, so um, so I thought uh, you know just raise that that there is a, a problem there. But I think what I find in pastoral counseling is um, People always, and particularly when I sit with young couples that are preparing to create a home and get married and try to figure out how to how to live for Christ as a wife, how to live for Christ as a husband, how to live for Christ together and as parents, that um, the whatever model you got for good or for ill, like whatever um, your parents just are going to set this mold on you, and you're either gonna slip into it or you're going to be so reactive against it 
and so you know animated to not slip into it that that's going to blow you off course that you're mm-hmm. like I never want to be like my dad um, and so I think it's always just um, you know it's fun it's interesting to talk about your dad a little bit and on well, Father's so- Day and yeah so a lot of people say you don't want to become like your parents, right? Um, would you say you had a great relationship with your dad? Like, t- tell me about your dad and how you were raised in that yeah. sense. Yeah, I'm grateful for my dad. Um, and uh, honestly, I think he's listening. He's a listener. Mm-hmm. He's one of the million podcast subscribers that we have. <laughs> Millions, guys. And, um, and, <laughs> we're doing big things <laughs> here in downtown and, Colorado Springs. <laughs> and uh, and the thing I'd say about my dad, Happy Father's Day, Dad, is I think that my dad and I are in the best season of our relationship so far. Um, That's amazing. It's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. I'm really grateful for it. God's done some wonderful things in our life and relationship. And to be back in my hometown and with my dad, my dad comes every Sunday to walk me into church at 630 in the morning mm-hmm. to make sure that uh, things are secure. And that that's I'm, sweet. And that's kind of part of who my dad is. My dad um, uh, was a military officer. Uh, my parents divorced uh, when I was uh, eight years old, and that was, that was really hard for both of them. Uh, but my dad was a, a military officer. He was an airborne ranger, company commander in Vietnam. So he's everything that that means. I mean, pretty leathery and tough. And if I just absorbed what does it mean to be a man, uh, I, was, I was waiting to grow up to be a man who is strong and ready to fight. I mean, ready to defend my family, ready to mm-hmm. defend my home, defend my country. Uh, that was what it meant to be a man as far as Uh, my dad. And I'm grateful that I had a dad who's always ready to come and and defend me. You know, I always knew that uh, that he was, if I was ever in trouble, he was on his way Mm -hmm. and and was going to be there to protect me. And so that's good. Uh, It could also be kind of hard to be around as that personality type, you know, is pretty tough about discipline. And um, the good news is I never made a mistake. So I was wow. so perfect mm. as a kid. I never got disciplined. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you believe that? <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was you too, right? Um, so I, but I was, yeah, discipline I knew was something to watch out for. And um, I didn't want that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he was also fun and full of laughter and adventure. And my dad came, uh, came to Christ late in life um, around 2001 when 9-11 happened, and then his father died, my grandfather died, just a few days after that. And since then, uh, Jesus has been right at the heart of my dad's life, and that just has made all the difference in the world in our relationship. And and so I think about my dad, I'm just, I'm super grateful that my dad's in my life. That's amazing. Aw, I love yeah, that so happy much. Father. So tell me about your dad. <laughs> um, I would say we have pretty similar upbringings in that sense my parents got divorced hmm i was in third grade so i was eight too and um i got to see my dad as a single single father for the majority of my life until senior year of high school so um i would say my dad grew up in christian settings my grandparents were very um you know southern baptisty okay um and I guess I didn't really see the Christian perspective of my dad until um, a few years later after the divorce. And it was really cool to see his transformation um, mm. and the way that he so heavily relied on God. But with that, I would say also came this um, disciplinary and moral compass that we were to follow. Um, and I have what my sisters mess with me um, because they call it middle child syndrome. So, you know, like the first kid is the guinea pig, but is always so sweet. I'm, you know, kind of the defiant, crazy, rebellious kid um, who always feels like I'm being shorted a little bit. Forgotten in the middle. Right. And that was, (laughs) and that was exaggerated a lot throughout my childhood. But I will say um, I'm really grateful for my dad because he made us love each other well. Me and my sisters love each other Mm. so much. And um, we have a sense of 
protectiveness over one another because were there of things his things that he said that were that like you say he made you guys love each other well um he had a bit of different disciplinary styles <laughs> i should say like if we fought he would make us stand in a corner and hug for an hour nice. <laughs> you know um have you ever heard of the fighting shirt have you ever heard of this they have to wear the same shirt yeah there's like a oh, shirt oh i had i had some friends who had to do that that's brutal <laughs> brutal but it'd be and like now hug say you love each other yeah. you know and we'd be like love you and then we'd go to our room you yeah. know um so i just i love how much he instilled a sense of loving my family mm in me, um, but he was also, you know, a military officer and mm. um, it did feel very authoritative, um, okay. but it was really cool to see him get remarried. And um, that, like I said, was senior year of my high school. And he has, I mean, he pursues Jesus mm -hmm. in a way together with my stepmom. Um, that is beautiful. And it's really cool that he's, kind of allowed me to explain my experience with Jesus because there was this familial, you know, sense of Christianity. Yeah. Us as Christians together in a household, you know, pray before meals, go to church on Sundays. I wasn't allowed to go to any sporting event or practice or anything on Sundays. On a Sunday. Yeah, so it made me a little bitter for a while, but now, you know, that I've come to my own terms with my relationship with Christ and I've Mm. developed kind of an identity in him that doesn't feel as, you know, group oriented as, you know, a Christian family, but it's, mm. you know, me, Liza, a Christian. It's been really, really cool to dig into and talk to him about because he is one of my, you know, biggest champions and supporters. That's, and isn't that, that's, that's so awesome. Yeah. Such a so, blessing. Super grateful for my dad. To He's have, yeah. the best. And he's silly, and he does have that uh, dad joke gift. Dad joke gift. That you have Yay. as well. So he'll send me, he'll randomly text me just the cheesiest <laughs> jokes, but it always <laughs> makes me smile because um, we have a similar sense of humor that is fun, you know, cool. to banter with in my adult life. <laughs> uh, I love that. Yeah. I love that. What yeah. a gift. And um, and others, um, you know, don't have their dad in their life or um, their dad in their life is a really hard thing. and. It's always a big part of preaching the gospel is just reunite how Jesus reunited us with God our Father. And so, um, as I said earlier, sort of in a pop psychology kind of way, that you're always going to be either living into the model that you saw or you're going to be re reacting to it. But the truth is, as Christians, too, we've got this totally other thing. We've got this life-giving um, alternative universe where our actual Father is in heaven. And so we can see our fathers here and think, um, my father's good in this way and has these uh, misgivings or, or shortcomings, um, but he's just a reflection of, of my true father in heaven and mm -hmm. the love that God has for me. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. My dad would always say a, to me, a gift. God loves you, or I love you so much more than you can imagine, mm. but God loves you so much more and I can't even yeah. comprehend that. And so when he would say he can't, understand that that mm. that would kind of be like what that's crazy my dad loves me so much i mm -hmm. can't imagine you know a god loving me even more than that but it's so infinite nice mm -hmm. that's such a great message but i think what i would want people to think about is um here in our church or um is that you're just you're not going to fall young men you're not going to fall into a healthy model of being a man accidentally there you, mm -hmm. it's going to take some intentionality and i'm sure this is true in the you know for women too but it's father's day so we're just focusing on the dudes but um but i i i just hope that young men don't wander i hope they take it seriously and so um i've got kind of four tips so um find an older person to emulate um well, here's, here's four tips. Here's four tips. Okay, number one, pay attention to your relationship with your father. Kind of the thing that we just did as a conversation, you know, how, what, what was my relationship with my father? Is it healthy? Is it absent? Uh, what did you learn from it? What gaps did it leave? There's a very real thing called the father wound that we all carry. No matter how great your dad was, he, he wasn't perfect. 
Um, and he's he wasn't as perfect as your little three year old heart, you know, imagined when when your dad is the biggest thing in the world. And <laughs> right. um, you know, your dad wasn't God. Your dad isn't God. Only God can satisfy that hole in your heart. But to take a little bit of time to just say, okay, what was my relationship with my father? What is my relationship with my father? And how has that impacted me? I think is really important. Hmm. Um, number two, because you're in the church, you're in a community of faith, find healthy older generation men to look up to. Um, that's one thing about our church. It's a five-generation church. We've got gobs of mature Christian disciples running around here. And uh, they love building into young men. Um, so, but it takes a little bit of boldness. You know, be bold. Say, can I hang out with you? Can I ask you a few questions? I'm, I'm 24 and I'm trying to figure out what it is to be a man. Um, and, uh, but, um, uh, you know, find someone. Find someone. It's, why we, it's part of why we started Fellows. Right. Fellows is the best. And a big part of it was to find a mentor. And I know that that yeah. was super life-giving. Did you find one? Men. I did. I did. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's, yeah, so we try to make, so fellows that Liza came here to be a part of, um, this uh, internship, part of that is that uh, we wanted to have this um, uh, this sort of like illustration of matching people up from generation to generation and saying, look, it's not that hard. We just want to match you up. You two go have coffee. And, but it takes, it takes, even though you're in the church, it takes a little bit of boldness to just step out there and say, hey, could I get coffee with you? But find healthy older generation men. Just look around and say, you know, when I'm 40, I hope I'm like that guy. When I'm 60, I hope I'm like that guy. Um, and get a little time with them. So that's number two. Number one, pay attention with your own relationship with your father. Number two, find healthy older generation men to look up to. Uh, number three, this is just Tim's tips now. I get a lot out of biographies. Do you ever read biographies? I don't. Yeah. I don't think I have since high school. Right? When like, they're when assigned. You had to? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I went through, I mean, in seminary and stuff, I was reading Bible commentary stuff and theology and philosophy and history. Um, and, I, and history would just get like this little snippet of somebody's life. But it was only after that that I got into biographies. And honestly, I look back. And I realized that the some of the key turning points in my life happened while I was reading biographies of heroic men who were exemplars to me. Like, wow. I felt my call to ministry while I was reading a book called Abandoned to God, the Oswald Chambers story, uh, written by a guy named David McCasland, who actually goes to this church, which was crazy oh, when I okay, met wow. him here, because this was two decades later that I met David McCasland here at this church. But that biography, I was reading that biography about Oswald Chambers, who was this um, British, do you know Oswald Chambers? I do. I have his, uh, my for, his, for his highest, yeah. Yeah, and that, that thing, which I had, that devotional, it's a daily 365-day-a-year devotional, is a compilation of his little devotions and things that he gave, both at a Bible college in London and to British soldiers in Egypt oh, wow. during World War One, And so... This was a time when I was thinking I was going to become a military chaplain, I was going to become an army chaplain full-time and spend my whole career with that, um, which part of that worked out, but I never went, uh, f you know, I, I came into the church, obviously. Mm -hmm. But um, read biographies of heroic and exemplary Christian men. There's a lot of great ones out there. And number four, I just want to say there are healthier podcasts out there. Like, I just want to say to the young men, I get it. I know that you're tired of being told that you're the problem, that you're wrong, that you're not really welcome in a way in this world. Um, but some of the countercultural voices are not going to lead you down the right path. Like the ones that are, um, some of these guys are not the healthiest um, people to listen to. And so um, obviously the Light and Life podcast is probably the best one out there. But um, <laughs> Totally. <laughs> No, I, I re really like a podcast called uh, Dad Tired with Jared Lopes. Um, he wrote a book called Dad Tired, which is funny, and he is funny. Uh, but it's just a conversation about being a dad, being a husband, being a Christian man in this world. And there are healthier podcasts out there, healthier streams, ways to keep the conversation going. So that's kind of four tips. 
Great. Yeah. And um, that's super helpful. I know that, like I said earlier, finding a mentor has especially been helpful for, you know, some of the young men that I know. Um, But I know that any kind of dynamic between father and child or, you know, just the idea of what it is to be a man is found in scripture. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I see here that one of the Ten Commandments is to honor your father and mother. Right. Deuteronomy 5.16 says, Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, our relationship with our parents is so important, and God told us that in the Ten Commandments. And then it, it pops up again, um, just to drop some more scripture on our listeners here on Father's Day. and Ephesians 6. One to four, children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. And then something for fathers. It says, fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. So, you know, when Scripture talks about our relationship with our parents, it, it, it always has this aspect to it that, this is going to be determinative. Like, it's either going to go well or it's going to go poorly for you. This is a relationship that's one of the most important relationships in your life. And it can either really trip you up and hold you back and get you into patterns that are just painful, or it can become a source of, of strength and of blessing. And so our prayer for you, listeners, and um, uh, my prayer for you, Liza, and for <laughs> me, Tim, is is just that God helps us to make these relationships a source of strength. That's beautiful. And from Tim and I both, we wish our listeners a happy Father's Day. Um, That about wraps up our time. But if you're enjoying these conversations on Faith and Life, please leave a review so that more people can find this podcast. And we'd love for you to join with us in the conversation. So if there's a topic that you'd like us to discuss, you can actually send an email to podcasts at firstprez.org firstprezcos.org. Yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Or if you're watching the video version on YouTube, feel free to leave a comment below and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode when we discuss discuss Sabbath rest with Senior Associate Pastor Jennifer Holtz. Thanks for listening and we'll see you in two weeks.